Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. Today we're going to be talking about a medication known as azetamibe. Its brand name is Ezotrol. Before we talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. So azetamibe reduces cholesterol by acting at the brush border in the small intestine by reducing the absorption of cholesterol. This would reduce the amount of intestinal cholesterol that is transported to the liver. So overall, azetamibe should reduce hepatic cholesterol stores and increase clearance of cholesterol from the blood. Now in terms of indications for azetamibe, I will start by saying that typically this medication is used with other cholesterol lowering agents. However, it can be used in mixed hyperlipidemia. Some patients use it in the treatment of homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. It can be used in primary hypercholesterolemia. And finally, it can be used in familial cytosterolemia. Now, before somebody was to use azetamibe, there are some contraindications they must clear, as well as some warnings and precautions they should be made aware of. So this medication is contraindicated in patients who have active liver disease. It would also be contraindicated in patients who have unexplained, persistent elevations in their transanimases. These contraindications would only apply if the patient is using this medication along with a statin. It's contraindicated to be used in patients who are pregnant, again, when used with a statin. And finally, it would be contraindicated in patients who have a hypersensitivity to azetamide or any other component of the product. Now, in terms of precautions, the first one here does kind of stem off of one of those contraindications we talked about. So if azetamibe is used with a statin, the patient may be at an increased risk of experiencing hepatic issues, such as an elevation in their transanimases. It is not recommended to use this medication with other fibrates or phenofibrates. It's also not recommended to be used in patients who have moderate or severe hepatic impairment. Myopathies, including rhabdomyolysis, are possible in patients using azetamibe. They would be more at risk if they're over the age of 65, if they have hypothyroidism, if they're using high doses of statins, or with the use of phenofibrates. Upon any signs of this developing, the medication should be stopped along with the other medication that they were using, such as statin or phenofibrate, that is used to treat cholesterol. There's also an increased risk of myopathy in patients who have renal disease, so we would expect closer monitoring in patients who have moderate to severe renal impairment. This would be especially an issue in patients using simvastatin with their azetamibe in doses over 20 milligrams. Now once somebody is cleared of the contraindications and made aware of the precautions and warnings and they start using azetamibe, they can expect to take it in tablet form. Medication should be taken with or without food, and it should be taken at the same time as a statin dose or a phenofibrate dose if the patient is using those medications as well. However, if the medication is a bile acid sequestrant, then it should be taken either two hours before or four hours after. If a patient is using azetamibe following a cardiovascular event such as a heart attack, they can expect to take 10 milligrams once daily in combination with a statin, for example, 40 milligrams of simvastatin, which was showed in studies. If somebody is using this medication to treat familial hypercholesterolemia, they can expect to take 10 milligrams of azetamibe as well, and it would usually be paired up with something like a torvastatin or simvastatin, again, a statin. And the dosing seems to be the same for other conditions that we mentioned when we talked about indications for use. The only difference would be when treating primary hypercholesterolemia, there is an off-label instruction that the tablet can be split and patients may try 5 milligrams. As with all medications, there are some adverse reactions or side effects that patients may experience while using azetamibe or ezetrol, so I'll list some of those here for you now. Diarrhea happens in 2.5 to 4.1% of patients. 2.5 to 3% develop joint pain and about 3% may develop muscle pain. Nasopharyngitis happens about 3% of the time, and sinusitis happens about 2% of the time. Upper respiratory tract infections were reported in about 3 to 4% of patients. The more serious but rare side effects would be hepatitis, an increase in hepatic enzymes, anaphylaxis, or rhabdomyolysis. That's all we're going to talk about today with azetamibe or ezetrol. As always, I'm thankful that you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, you can like the videos, share the videos, or most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There are some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.